This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is an OnGuard Model 8101 Beast Padlock. Now, some of you may know that I featured this same lock in a video yesterday in which I demonstrated a vulnerability in which you can take one of these locks while it's locked to a chain or a hasp and disassemble it completely using nothing but ordinary hand tools. It's a vulnerability that is frankly unacceptable, and if you are interested in seeing that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But a whole bunch of you asked me how difficult this lock was to pick open. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna see how difficult this is to open up. I should note that this is not the exact same lock I was dealing with yesterday. That lock is now in the trash, which is where it belongs, with the exception of the core, which I saved for picking practice. So let's get to picking on this. The lock in here is a 10 slider core, five on the right, five on the left. Each slider controls its own separate sidebar. And I've picked maybe four or five of these cores in the past, and in every single one, the bank of sliders on the left will bind before the bank of sliders on the right. So that's the one I go to first. Okay, little click out of the first slider. Click on the second, nothing on three, four, little click out of five. Back to the beginning. Nothing on one, two, three, four, or five. Go a little slower, I must have missed something. One, two, there you go, click out of three, little movement on the core. Okay, moving back to the beginning. One, little click on two, nothing on three, click on four, and we got a little bit of movement on the core. You might have heard a little thud. That indicates all of the sliders on the left side are, are set, so we should move on to the right. Nothing on the first slider. Little click on the second. Nothing on the third. Nothing on the fourth. Little click on the fifth. Back to the beginning. Nothing on one, two, three, four, five, and we opened it up. Okay, so as you can see, it certainly is not an easy lock to open up, but it's also certainly not a hard one. So let's take this guy apart and I will show you what's inside. <clears throat> okay, we can start by taking these screws off the bottom. And now we can remove this bottom cap, which is made out of some cast material, probably zinc if I had to take a guess. Now the top can be removed with a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, and that removes the top cap, again, probably zinc, and most of the lock body, which is just a plastic shell. Then you're left with the actual lock itself that's made out of steel. And as you can see, underneath all of that gingerbread is a pretty ordinary looking lock. 11 millimeter shackle, a relatively thin but steel lock body. Let's see if that lock body is hardened. I actually have not tested that before in the past. It is hardened, so it's got that going for it. We have steel on the bottom, and you can see this bottom cap is held in by a set screw right there that has a ball bearing nailed into it, which uh, prevents you from putting an, an Allen wrench in that, and again, one on the other side. So unless we take a hammer, which I demonstrated yesterday, and pound those ball bearings even further into the set screws, we can't disassemble this any further. However, I do have the core from the lock yesterday, so let's take that guy apart and you can actually see what's going on inside of the core. <clears throat> to 
take this apart. It looks like we need a C-clip remover. And there we go. We actually put a key in here to retain all of the sliders as we're taking this apart. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is remove the sidebar on both sides. And I'm gonna put them into slots seven and eight here. And then we're going to get a pick and fish, <clears throat> fish out the little springs that operate the sidebars. Okay, now you can see all of the sliders we have here. And as I remove the key, these will come out in pairs. And I'm gonna put each of the number five sliders here, the four, three, two, and one. Okay, this is being a little bit difficult. Let me get some tweezers. Okay, there's our two number five sliders. Number four. Number three. Oh, come on, number two. Okay, let me get number one out and then we'll we'll work on number two. See if we can reach from the inside and grab him. Hmm. I'm not sure why number two is not coming out. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, and there should be springs behind each of these. Most of them are, are buried in there, probably with grease. They're not gonna come out easily. Okay, let's take a closer look at these sliders. And as I'm looking at them right now, I had previously told some people that these did not have any false gates, but as I'm looking carefully, I can see that some of them actually do have false gates in them, though I certainly did not feel them as I was doing picking. On the other hand, others of these sliders have no false gates. So, strange. Another interesting aspect here is how wide those gates are. If we look at how wide the gates are in comparison to the sidebar, you can see there's a whole bunch of slop there, which means you don't have to be very precise in your picking. Okay, let me put these down and then I'll give you a close-up of all of this. Let me arrange these hopefully so you can see see them a little bit better. As I'm taking a close look at these, I can only see, so far I see, let's see, one, two, three, four of the ten sliders have false gates. Not sure why they decided to do it for some, but not for others. Okay. Now you can see all the sliders. As you can see, 
There are false gates in, let's see, the bottom one in slot one, top in slot two, bottom in slot three, and top in slot five. We have our sidebars in slots seven and eight. And let's take a close look at that core. We have slots for our sidebar on either side here and here. Then our 10 slots for sliders, and you can see the springs down each of those holes. Okay, so that's all I have for you on this OnGuard Model 8101 Beast Padlock. As far as picking goes, it's not terribly good, but it's also not bad either. However, the vulnerability I demonstrated in yesterday's video, in my opinion, renders this lock complete trash. So that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.